Hello to everyone, greetings from Varna, Bulgaria. It is almost 15 degrees, 31st of January. What a lovely day! Well, after my last video about the best average speed for long motorcycle trips, I noticed that most of you liked the format that I did it, or me riding and talking about some interesting topics. So guys, because I don't want to miss this lovely weather, I decided to make another round video. And the topic that I choose is liquid versus air-cooled engine, which is better for long motorcycle trips. So if you have nothing to do, stay with me. Welcome back! This weather is such a gift, especially after last week of snow and storms everywhere around Bulgaria and really, really cold temperatures. So today, almost 15 degrees is just like a blessing. Back to the topic, which one of these engines is better? Liquid or air-cooled? The usual advice is that air is better because it has fewer problems. It might be, but not necessarily the truth. And now many of you might say, Pavlin, we already know what you're gonna suggest because you have a liquid-cooled uh, engine. Yes, but what I'm going to say, or my opinion, it doesn't really matter. What I'm going to share with you, it's the facts. The facts that are well known from each and every one of you. So you can decide for yourself which one is better for you. Last night I thought that it is going to be a good idea to come and ride here on the beach until I talk on the video but as you can see guys the whole town is here of course it is 14 degrees sunny sunday so it's not a surprise so i might need to find another spot to continue the video in my opinion guys the best way to choose the right system is to test them in the real riding travel conditions but for most of you this might be impossible that's why another option or alternative option will be to see the pros and cons of each one i will start with the cons and i will start with the air cooled engines the well-known cons are that uh, on the hot days the engine might overheat it is the same on the traffic on the, when you ride on the low speed when you ride off-road sand or something like that and now guys i have a perfect example for you on the traffic light or situations like this you can easily overheat your engine okay it is not going to happen today because it is only 14 degrees but if this is a summer 35 or more i will definitely need to stop at least few times to cool down the engine because as i told you it needs speed to cool down but when i said speed it should be at least 20 30 kilometers per hour or more so uh, moving in the traffic with 10 kilometers per hour it's not going to have help even if you have a, a oil radiator as most of the air cooled engines got it is not going to help if you're wondering what is this here this is the outline of the video not exactly script but the most important moments that i don't want to forget anyway i told you about the well-known cons but let me tell you something else something that many of you might miss as well it is efficiency do you know that the air-cooled engines usually use more petrol they've got low performance and they are not very good in the cold days and the reason of that is because they do not have thermostat and they do not have a constant temperature on the engine which is a big plus for uh, liquid cooled engines they've got thermostat they've got this antifreeze in and the engine always work on the same temperature around 95 degrees which is the optimal temperature for the engine but because the air cooler do not have it as i said they use more petrol they've got low performance they wear faster and many more like this and now at this point i can almost hear my riding friend dima yelling me that his dr650 or his freewind 650 uh, always use less petrol than my yamaha tenere and it is also faster in in many ways but dima all of this have nothing to do with the cooling system of your engine it's more about how the carburetor works how heavy is the bike what you have and many more for example my motorcycle is around 40 kilograms heavier which is uh, already a big minus in terms of uh, petrol 
Also, I have an open exhaust and power commander. Yes, I have a little bit more horsepower, but of course, this come with a, uh, comes with a certain price or use more petrol. So this is relevant. It's not because of the air coolant or a liquid coolant system. So far, it looks like all the cons of the air cooled engines are pros for the liquid cooled engines. But is it really like that? Let's see what is the biggest concern or the biggest con of the liquid cooled engines. Number one, it is complicated and it might break, which is absolutely true. There is uh, many more elements. You have the radiator, you have uh, water hoses, you have thermostat, you have a water pump, many different elements and if one of these stops, you basically need to stop on the road and try to fix it. The good news is that most of the models won't damage the radiator if they go down. You can test it by yourself. Just put your motorcycle on the side and see what will hit the ground. I can bet that in 90% of the time it is going to be your handlebar and maybe your tank. But in very, very rare cases it might be the radiator. And for that purpose you can mount a crash guard. Many of you love crash guards and now is the moment to install it and use it. But yes, it is true, if you damage any of the elements of the water cooling system, the engine needs to stop and be repaired. Another con that I have heard many times is that the liquid-cooled engines are heavier because they have the radiator, they have uh, antifreeze in, like uh, one liter and something, they have a water pump, they have all of these hoses and they are heavier. And this might be a case in a few engines, but in most of the engines it's exactly the opposite because the air-cooled engines, they do not have all of these elements, but they have very big engines, all technologies. They have very big cylinder heads made from aluminum with different shape, different size, all of these different angles to be possible to cool down the engine. So at the end, 90% of the air-cooled engines are heavier than 90% of uh, water-cooled engines. Believe or not, you can Google it. Another popular believing is that uh, the liquid cooled system requires more maintenance. You have to change the antifreeze every 10,000 or 20,000 kilometers. You might need to change your water pump, water hoses and stuff like that. But in my opinion, this really depends on the model. So I always use my personal experience and I can tell you I have this in video as well that I never changed my antifreeze and I changed it recently on 160,000 kilometers. I never changed my thermostat even now, even now and I never need to change any of the hoses. So I've got 160 travel free kilometers with the same liquid system. I recently changed my water pump and it was not even for change. So the maintenance of the liquid cooling system, it really depends on the model, your riding style and how exactly you treat the motorcycle. But yes, it will require at least change in some stage. But if all of this comes with the positives that I already mentioned, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this maintenance price or whatever you want to name it. At the moment I'm riding in Albena. Albena is a famous summer resort on the coast of Black Sea. Of course at the moment it's absolutely empty, there is no one there. But summertime is fantastic, it's green, the beach is on the right hand side, I'll try to show it to you now. Wonderful Albena beach line. It is more than 3 kilometers long and in some places it is more than 250 meters wide. Wonderful! And these are the famous Albena hotels. They've got these shapes like stairs are actually very old, well, more than 30 years old, maybe 40 years old already. And summertime here is completely different. Now in the winter it's empty, but it is what it is. At least I got the chase and this wonderful weather to talk with you guys. Before I finish, I want to remind you of important moments that you have to have in consideration when you make your choice, when you decided what is better for you. And if you plan to write in the summer, temperatures between 25-30 degrees, mostly on the nice twisty roads and you, you will move all the time. Air cooled engine will be just fine. But if you know that you'll ride in the city, you might hit a lot of traffic. 
you might face some different conditions like riding on the sand for example or off-road or some slow technical tracks it will be way better to have liquid cooled engines so it depends on you and your type of trips to decide what exactly you need but before you go i have one very simple question and i would like to read your answers in the comment section below and it is if the air cooling system is so good so trouble free and so efficient why all of the new motorcycles are coming with liquid cooled engines simple question and i need simple answers in the comment section below that's everything from me guys and i hope that this video at least gave you some thoughts and it will help you to make the right choice don't forget to like it always ride safe and see you next time ciao